Good evening, commissioners. If we'll come to order, we will begin the six o'clock portion of our agenda for tonight for announcements, proclamations, and resolutions. The first item on the agenda is a resolution 22-12-975, and that will go all the way through 22-12-1070, and that is to honor the state champion Anderson County High School Maverick football team. And that has been requested by Commissioner Isabel, uh, Chairman Anderson, and Commissioner Vandegrift. Uh, gentlemen and lady, you have the floor. To uh, a joint resolution from the Anders County Board of Commissioners and Board of Education honoring the Anders County High School Maverick football team for victorious undefeated season and winning the 2022 Tennessee 4A state championship. Whereas the 2022 football season for the Anders County Mavericks was won for the ages and will never be forgotten in the Anders County sports history. And whereas the Mavericks finished the season with a perfect 15 0 undefeated season that culminated with a hard-fought win in the Blue Cross Bowl, earning the school's first ever football state championship. And whereas the spirit of the team unity and remarkable team first attitude instilled by senior leadership since early spring workouts was clearly evident and on display as the well-conditioned Mavericks preserved in the state championship game when the team overcame a 14-point first quarter if deficit on the way to a victorious win score of 34 to 30 over perennial powerhouse Nashville Pearl Con Magnet High School. And whereas justifiably a record number of Maverick players and coaches received individual awards for their stellar performance with five players awarded all state recognition, 11 players named to the all region team. Head coach David Gillen named two uh, 4A coach of the year and assistant coach Gary Terry named Region 2 for a Assistant Coach of the Year. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Anderson County Board of Commissioners and Board of Education meeting in joint session this 19th day of December 2022 that we honor, salute, and congratulate the players, coaches, staff, and support personnel of the undefeated 2022 Tennessee 4A state champions, the Anderson County High School Maverick football team. Be it further resolved that we honor the parents, students, teachers, staff, band members, cheerleaders, community boosters, and the entire Maverick family for their dedication and support to this historical team. The team's legacy will live forever in the history of Anderson County. Due to the past and affected this 19th day of December 2022, Joss Anderson, Chair, County Commission, Terry Frank, County Mayor, Scott Gillenwaters, Chair, Anderson County Board of Education, and Dr. Tim Parrott, Director of Schools. We'd like to thank everybody for all the support we've had all season in our community. Uh, it's been an amazing year, magical year for, for our program and the community. And um, the boys, um, the work they've done, you know, the championship kind of says, says it all for us, how, how, how much has went into this year. But um, we're just extremely thankful uh, to be here, um, to, all of our coaching staff, on behalf of all of us, um, to work here, to have the opportunity we have here. Um, to help mold these young men. A lot of times, the lessons you're trying to teach these young men don't turn over for you in this life. But man, what a blessing for us to get to talk about hard work, um, accountability, responsibility, and all them type things, and then get, them get to see the fruit of that labor this year. And um, we're just thankful for it, and thankful to the Lord for the opportunity he's given me and our staff and our community. And we're so thankful to the community for all the support we got. Um, Week leading into the championship game, Thursday, Friday, all the signs and posters and parades the elementaries and middle schools did for us was just overwhelming. Crowd support we had in the championship game was as good as I've ever seen in a championship game. And it was humbling, but we're thankful for it. Um, and again, we appreciate you all honoring here tonight. And um, go Mavs. <laughs> Thank you. 
just real real quick to reiterate what he said we can't say thanks enough for all the support that you all give us dr parrot and he gives us and our community our uh, our family our maverick family our, our lake city norris andersonville they what a great turnout and uh, support for these kids and uh, we, we once again just thank you so much for all that you do for anderson county yes sir, yes, sir. Gavin O was the MVP of the state championship game and our all-region team. Region 2-4A Anders County All-Region selection was Grayson Bradshaw, Nick Moog, Gavin No, Braden Miller, Eli Braid, Tate Russell, Andrew Meyer, Matthew Clayton, Cole Phillips, Jaden Bullock, and Lucas May. Anders County All-Academic selection, Josh Ariander, 2022 Region 2 4A Offensive Player of the Year, Walker Martinez, Anderson County. Defensive Player of the Year, Eli Davis, Anderson County. Defensive Lineman of the Year, Eli Nelson, Anderson County. Specialist of the Year, Tyler Radcliffe, Anderson County. Defensive Specialist of the Year, Jermaine Allen, Anderson County. Offensive Specialist of the Year, Bryson Val, Anderson County. Region 2 4A Coach of the Year, David Gillum, Anderson County and assistant coach Gary Terry. Okay. If you'll indulge us, uh, Jay Yeager went above and beyond, and all 85 of the team members have a the same plaque. We're not going to read each plaque out, but we did want to call their name out. <laughs> on TV. Number one, Tate Russell. Sure. Number two, Waylon LaRue. Number four, Israel Small. Number five, Brandon Miller. Number six, Cole Phillips. Not here. Okay. Number eight, Jermaine Allen. Congratulations. Number nine, Walker Martinez. Number eleven, Christian Tuttle. Number 13, Chris Nelson. Number 14, Bryson Vowell. Number 15, Cody Miller. Number 18, Nick Moog. Number 19, Trenton Strickland. Number 20, Josh Valero. Number 21, Tyre Rad Radcliffe. Number 22, Riley Wolfenbarger. Number 23, Evan Pratt. <laughs> Number 24, Reese Russell. Number 25, 
Number 25, an MVP, all state 4A and all region 2 4A team, Gavin No. Number 26, Landon Eagle, Engel. Number 32, Benton Campbell. Number 33, Hunter Brummett. Number 34, Defensive Player of the Year, Eli Davis. Number 40, Dominic McMillan. Number 42, Caden Reed. Number 46, Mason McMillan. Number 48, Logan Crumpley. Number 50, Jaden Bullock. Come on. Go about half the way and stop, and I'll send the other ones this way. Right there. I don't think the fire marshal's working tonight. Number 52, Eli Nelson. Number 53, Matthew Clayton. Number 54, Lucas May. Number 56, Braden Phillips. Sorry, Brady Phillips. Sorry about that. Number 57, Ty Murphy. Number 58, Slade Alley. Number 59, Hayden Gray. Number 60, Cole Fox. Number 61, Cody Johnson. Number 64, Christian Brown.
Number 65, Jackson Hill. Number 66, Sam Waddell. Number 71, Bennett Hicks. Number 76, Taylor Davis. Number 78, Connor Isabel. Number 82, Jace Horton. Number 88, Elijah Archer. And this is Ella. <laughs> right, everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ella has one. Okay. I think it's buried in there. <laughs> <laughs> Two dog lines. <laughs> Y'all want to get in there for a group? Yeah, yeah we're, we found let's let, let's get everybody squeezed in for a group picture. Hey, he just 
called you Judge Judy. Yeah. Hey, you just missed the Thank you so much, Gary. Awesome. No problem, buddy. Exactly. Loved it. Loved it. Thank y'all. One other thing that I wanted to mention is the community support and the other team support. You know, when I looked over on the OEB sign and saw Mr. Wandale over there in a, in a Maverick game, and then I saw several Clinton football players there in support of some of the games. But then when we come together in championship game, we had Oak Ridge players, Clinton players, and Anderson County players, and we beat the best that Knoxville had. <laughs> Commissioner Isabel, Chairman, Mr. Van Drip. Uh, commissioners, we will be postponing the ESG presentation. That will be next month. Next item on the agenda is the public hearing resolution number 22-12-968, amending the Anders County Zone Resolution to include the property at 127 Strader Road, PAL. Uh, that is found on the Anderson Tax Map 097 from A2 Rural Residential District to C1, General Commercial District. Is there anyone in the audience tonight which w wishes to speak on this particular public hearing? Just one. Is that correct? Okay. Would you raise your hands, please? One, two, three, four. Okay. Any more than that? What I'm trying to do is gauge how much time uh, that we'll need to have the public hearing. So four of you? Okay. All right, so what we'll do is, uh, just so I can keep track of it, we'll start over here on this side. When you come to the podium, please state your name and address for the record, please. And you will have uh, three minutes to speak. 
after the three minutes, I'll wave or let you know you're getting close to your time or whatever. And then we'll call up the next speaker to be able to come up. Uh, I would ask in the, in the uh, interest of time, if you hear the speaker in front of you say what you were getting ready to say, uh, if you would, just kind of skip that part. If you would, uh, try to be courteous, uh, address the chair. Sometimes these public hearings get a little, people get a little upset, and I understand that, but we'll, we'll try to give everybody an opportunity to speak tonight. We don't want to limit anybody, but we do want to try to maintain some order, okay? So we'll call up the first speaker. If you would, just come to the podium, please, and state your name and address. <coughs> My name is Michelle, and this is Christian Fuentes, and we're the owners of 127 Straighter Road. Okay. Uh, the, so we were trying to, uh, I do, I, I work on cars uh, for, for a living, and I work out of my garage, you know what I mean? And uh, I was just trying to get a section of the property uh, zone for commercial, because of the due grants and uh, other licenses I can get. I mean, I wasn't trying to, I'm not trying to keep the area dirty. Or I mean, create like a junkyard or anything, anything of that matter. I mean, just it's just kind of like our. It's, I mean, I can't afford a commercial pro any kind of commercial property at the moment on on Clinton Highway because uh, because of the way of the inflation. But I'm doing my best to, to keep everything clean at my house, and I just want to let the I mean the, the straighter road know that I'm not trying to create a junkyard. You know, and I mm -hmm. I, I, I mean I don't keep parts cars, and as soon as I, they're ready to go, I usually try to get them out the junkyard or whatever needs to be done with them. Because if it's not if it's not my car, I mean, I'd like, like to get it out, out of there. Mm -hmm. So that's what we had to say. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, it's more for the community. We do a lot of pro bono work with the church community to help out, especially with single moms. And we've been doing that with, through his church for about a year or two. Just there's people that have come in that can't afford a transmission, so we do a lot of work to help out those families. And we're not trying to be a full-time shop. We're just trying to get it commercialized so we can get grants to get more money in order to help the community more. That's what really what we're trying to do. Here, he works at Pet Boys, so this isn't a full-time job. It's just something that we're trying to do just to help out. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's us. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner McCain. Sir, if you would come back up just for a second, please. One of our commissioners has a question. Did the planning commission recommend this? Uh, so I've been doing some research because I've been I was looking at other properties and uh, um, how to get a, a, a like local. I couldn't find anything to rent. And someone had brought it to my idea, my to my attention that maybe I can section off a piece of the property since I'm really close to a commercial property, which I believe it's a, uh, I'm like, I'm not even a hundred, probably like in walking distance, like maybe like 50 feet from the start of a commercial property, which would be the RNT transport. And that's why I was just trying to get an idea to see if I do, could qualify for this or not, or not. But have you been to the planning commission with yeah. this? Yes. And did they recommend it? Yes. 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 They were the ones that told you it needs to be C1 then? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, the next. Go ahead. Please state your name and address. My name is Sharon Todd. I live on 911 Mahaffey Road in Powell. We own two properties adjacent to this, 109 and 113 Strader Road. Um, the one, there are 82 addresses on Strader Road. None of them are commercial. They're all residential, farm, or acreage. The one property that he's referring to fronts on Clinton Highway. That's a huge difference. And their address is 2801 Clinton Highway and it's R&T Transport. So out of 82 properties, there's one and it fronts on Clinton Highway. That's a big difference on a four lane with a, with a turn lane as opposed to a two lane road. And we just think it's inconsistent with the neighborhood use and would not benefit the neighborhood. If you drive down Clinton Highway, every car lot, every repair place, some are worse than others. I'm not putting them all in the same category and not yours, but they look more like salvage yards than repair shops. There's one right across next to the Weigels that has about 50 vehicles and about half of them look like they need a salvage yard. Red Johnson's junkyard is about seven acres and it never looked that bad in all the years it was there. And people from the community can verify that. Tracy, Tyler, and people who've lived out in Claxton. 
that's my only opposition is we don't need, need another junkyard, especially in a residential neighborhood. But we've got 82 addresses up straighter from Clinton Highway to the Knox County line, and there's nothing commercial. The only commercial fronts on Clinton Highway. And most of the frontage there, it has a small part on Strader Road. And so that's why I'm recommending that the commission review this more closely. And I attempted to send <coughs> some stuff to each of you and with the state assessment on the properties and some photographs. And I appreciate your consideration in this matter. Thank you, ma'am. Next. Please state your name and address, sir. I'm Ronald Todd. I live at 911 and Haffey Road. And <clears throat> we own property adjacent to that. And we do feel that it's, um, it should stay away from commercial. There's no commercial on that road now. We feel it should stay individual housing, private residences. That's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> my name's Terry Todd. I live at 123 Gade Lane. And me and my father bought these properties that are next to this business um, about 15 or 20 years ago. Spent a lot of money remodeling them, making them, I think, an upgrade to the neighborhood. Um, there's been a probably 10 or 15 cars parked down the driveway where they're doing the business. It's looked better lately. Um, that's my only concern is it's bringing down the value. If, if it looks like a junkyard, it's gonna bring down the value of our house. And I just hate to see that happen after we spent so much time and money fixing up the neighborhood. Um, I don't know if y'all are familiar with these two houses. They're right there at the corner. There's a red brick and the yellow house and uh, they did a nice job. They, they look a lot better than they used to. And I don't wanna see that's, that's my only concern. If they're not gonna have more than two or three cars there, I wouldn't have a beef with it. But there's been several cars parked out there when I go by recently. Um, that's my only concern. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Anyone else? All right, any questions from commissioners? I have a question. How far is it from um, Clinton Highway, that your property from Clinton Highway? Can you come up to the podium? Yeah, she probably does. <clears throat> I've got a map here. I just wondered what the distance was. I'm not sure. This, this is the commercial property on Clinton Highway. Mm -hmm. This is their property. And what is here? This is our property. We own this and this. Okay. We're adjacent to theirs. And okay. this, is, this, is, this is some of the farmland. Everything up there, 82 addresses, is either farmland, residential. This one place on the corner on the highway is commercial. Mm -hmm. Is there a house here, just right we here? Have, we have two houses there. There's a brick house at the corner of mm -hmm. the Strader Road and the Highway, and there's a, a yellow house. Okay. And I don't, I'm sorry, I don't, well, so we the scale here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if that's what you're looking at. Yeah, it's got eight miles. Okay. Point they could okay. probably tell us from the code's office. You know, the, distance, the distance from their place to the miles. commercial property. Point one. Point one, right here. That's according to Google. Tenth of a mile. Yeah, tenth of a mile. Tenth of a mile. And uh, there is another commercial property uh, right down the street. It's Murphy's Electrical. They have a commercial property right down the street from us, too. We're down past you on the yeah, road? Yeah, yes, ma'am. So if you go down maybe about not even a half a mile on the right, mm -hmm. it's Murphy's Electrical. Okay. And then there's another maybe maybe a half a mile down on the left, there's a greenhouse commercial property, too. I'm not sure. I know it's there because they <coughs> have signs for fresh eggs and fresh plants all the time. Straight road. road. Yes, so, sir. Yeah. And I understand the concern about the junkyard. That's what we're trying to not do. We're cleaning up everything. We have one car there right now, and that's actually my car. So um, I have three cars, so it might look like there's multiple cars there, but that's actually just my vehicle. But we actually are 
moving them to the back because we have that land back there. So I understand the concern of it looking like a junkyard. <coughs> And that's not what we're trying to do anymore. We're cleaning everything up to make it look, plus I, it is a beautiful neighborhood, so we don't want it to look like a junkyard. The Johnsons are our neighbors, so we understand. Thank All right, you, thank you. Any further questions from commissioners? Sure. Uh, Tim, you said on planning commission, what was the discussion <coughs> y'all recommended for approval? That's correct. And when it comes out of, of planning commission, it means they met all the criteria. It's not usually uh, put out there for like it's noticed for this plan for this uh, public meeting. So but they met everything that was necessary to be able to do this zoning. And one of the things that, that we've seen here in the last few years is we've seen a lot of rezoning because that's commercial development in Anderson County. And how you know how long did we go without having any of these meetings? Long time. Thank you. Any further questions from commissioners? Commissioner Wondell, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I had two, I guess one question. Was the property um, notified to the residents, the surrounding residents, did they get notified? We did not get notified. Isn't that required now in our? Mr. Chairman, I'm going to be opposed to this as we move forward. I know this is just public hearing, and I appreciate the folks, but until everybody's notified and everybody has uh, knowledge of this, I think we're putting, again, the cart before the horse, and I don't want to uh, step into there. We've had some people here that, in our district that have spoke against it. I know we have the owners who would like to see it happen. Uh, I respect what you're doing. I appreciate what you're doing to help folks, um, but I don't think we're ready to take action on it even though it's on the agenda and we got to vote on it next, but uh, that, that's just my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Folks, just a second. Sorry. Hang on just a second. Any more questions from commissioners? Commissioner Mays. Yeah, I, I thought I saw in the agenda packet where the, the, the folks who surround 127 were notified. And then I also, I received correspondence from the Todd's today. Then I also called the owner at 129 um, Strader Road and spoke to him. He did have knowledge of it, uh, of what the plan was, uh, as far as what this family's trying to do. I don't know if that helps, but um, at least I know that obviously the Todd's knew and then uh, Mr. Johnson and his family knew when I spoke to them today. Commissioner Allen, go ahead. Uh, how long have you been living in that? area, um, your, your residence there? Well, we don't live there. We own the property, but I've lived in the community for uh, over 60 years. Yeah, and so how long have you been there at the we property? Been for four years. Four years? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions from commissioners? What I don't want to do is start going around and around and around. Uh, those of you who've already spoken once, uh, if there's no one else that wants to address the issue, we will allow you to come back up, but I would ask that it would be something different than what has already been said. So, Ms. Todd, do you want to come back up again? Yes, I want to address one thing. The, the Murphy Electrical, they own the property there, but I don't think they run the business out of there. Their vehicles are there, and it's not zoned commercial up the road. I printed out a status thing from the state assessment website and that there's no commercial property on Strader Road. If, or if there is a state doesn't know about it, other people are operating. And it's okay to bring your trucks home, you know, because Murphy and them run an, an air conditioning business. So they probably have a warehouse where they go pick up units, duct work or whatever they're working with. But uh, their trucks are up there. They've owned property there for some while. My father sold them the property there. So, uh, and as far as a greenhouse, but there's nothing zoned there's 82, 82 addresses up there. There's a cemetery, 82 addresses, and only the one on the corner is owned commercial. Thank you, ma'am. So that's, yeah. Sir, did you want to say something else? And I'll give you another opportunity as well, but we probably need oh, no, to. No, I'm just saying that they have put the sign up and send letters out. So there's been a sign for a while up there. Okay. All right. I've got one more question. Commissioner McCain. Did, was there one owner that did not get notification here tonight? 
did the original commercial zoning, I did. They gave me a, they sent me a, a letter on this last go around for this, but I didn't get any notification. It said it's posted in the paper, but I didn't see that. We don't, uh, we don't send it out on the front end of the planning commission. We right. send it out when it goes to pool commission. We right. find out after the fact, and then it's, it's all, they get, all they do is make a recommendation yes or no. So these guys have final approval. But all property owners were notified. Is that people that actually touch their property? Yes. Were notified. We're notified. That we would be meeting tonight. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further comments? Anyone has not yet spoken on the matter? <coughs> all right. We will close the public hearing at this time. We will be voting on the matter on the regular agenda coming up or some action will be taken on the regular agenda coming up for our 630 agenda uh, if there's no further business to come before us for the consent agenda we will be in recess until our regular agenda we can give a about five minutes five minute break everybody has to leave <laughs>